Welcome to the Know How video series for users of the Avaya Collaboration Designer Snap-in. In this two-part demonstration, you'll learn how to use some of the more advanced features such as gateways, boundary events, call control tasks and data transformation. We're going to build this real-life workflow which defines the process by which subscription requests to a theatre's free What's On guide are received, confirmed and added to a database. The workflow starts when a subscription requester submits their name and mailing address via a form on the theatre's website, plus at least one of their email address or phone number. If the requester provides an email address, an automated email is sent to that address containing the URL of another web page that the requester must visit within the next hour to confirm their identity. If the requester provides a phone number only, an automated call is made to that number and on answer, a pre-recorded message played inviting the requester to press 1 on their keypad to confirm that they did indeed make the original request. Once confirmed by either method, the requester's name and address are added to a database. So let's start building the workflow definition. To save time, the start event has been configured to be triggered on occurrence of a predefined mail out subscription request event. Notice that the event passes in the name, mailing address and email address or phone number entered by the requester. In addition, these values have been mapped to and stored in the variables object so that they will be available when needed later in the workflow. This screen shows how to create a test HTTP request to trigger the workflow using the Postman REST client. Depending on the values entered by the requester, the next task in the workflow will be to either send an email or make a one-party call. For the workflow to be able to determine which path to follow, a gateway needs to be added to the definition. Three types of gateway are available, depending on whether one, multiple or all paths are to be taken. In this case, only one of the paths should be followed to confirm the subscription, so choose the exclusive gateway and connect it like so. To define the conditions under which the send email path is taken, double click on the connection to open the properties dialog and set the sequence number to 1 to ensure that the conditions on this path are tested first. Next, select conditions to open the conditions editor. The simplest way to determine whether an email address was entered by the requester is to check that the email address variable isn't an empty string. Then validate the expression, it's fine, save and OK to close the dialog. We don't need to enter any conditions for the phone path as we are going to assume that if an email address isn't provided, a phone number must be, i.e. if the send email path isn't taken, then the phone path will be. We'll create the send email path in this part of the demonstration and build out the phone path in part 2. Start by double-clicking the Send Email task to open its Properties dialog. The sender and subject line are constant values, so enter them here. The email recipient and message body are variable values, so select Input Mapping and map them from the variables object, like so. Note that the system variable instance ID has been mapped to the message body. Every time a workflow definition is initiated, a new unique identifier is generated specific to that instance. We need to include this workflow instance ID in the email body for reasons that you'll learn later, but we also need to add some standard text instructions for the requester, which we'll do now using data transformation. Double-click the end of the connector to open the data transformation dialog. Add the instructional text and use the concatenate string function from the functions editor to append the instance ID variable to the text. Notice that the instance ID has been added as a query string to the URL of the web page that the requester must visit to confirm their subscription. Using this mechanism, the instance ID is passed to the client web application that sends subscription confirmations. Validate the expression, then save and save again. 
The workflow must now sit and wait until the requester visits the web page and confirms their subscription. This is achieved using the Receive task. The Receive task facilitates one of the most distinctive capabilities of Collaboration Designer, namely the ability to define business processes that span extended periods with intervals of minutes, hours, days or even longer between tasks. When the requester confirms their subscription, an HTTP request is sent from the client web application to the event catalog, which generates an occurrence of a mail at subscription confirmation event and which in turn triggers a receive task to continue processing. However, there could be multiple instances of this workflow definition in existence, each initiated by a separate subscription request and all waiting for a confirmation event before continuing. So we need to ensure that a particular confirmation event only triggers continuation of the workflow instance to which it relates. To do this, the Receive Tasks criterion field must be set to Instance and the client web application must return the workflow instance ID it received in the URL query string in the HTTP request it sends to the event catalog. This screen shows how to create the required HTTP request in Postman for testing purposes. In this way, the occurrence of the mail out subscription confirmation event generated by the requester's confirmation is matched to the workflow instance initiated by the requester's original subscription request. When confirmation is received, the update DB task is used to add the requester's name and address to the subscriber database and the workflow terminates. We'll look at the update DB task in more detail in part 2. But what if something goes wrong and the email can't be sent or the requester receives it but decides not to confirm? The workflow instance would sit there in perpetuity and never complete. This situation is avoided using boundary events. To catch errors that might occur whilst generating or sending the email, attach an error boundary event to the send email task. If an error does occur, we will simply log a message by linking the error boundary event to a log message task configured with the required message, like so. Then terminate the workflow. To put a limit on the time allowed for a requester to confirm, add a timeout boundary event to the receive task and set the duration to one hour in milliseconds. If the requester does not confirm within the hour, log a message by connecting the timeout boundary event to the log message task and terminate the workflow. That ends part one of this demonstration of advanced collaboration designer features. Watch part two and other videos in this series available at the URLs shown.